turn to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Starting at verse 1, Romans 8, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the world, or according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement. In other words, where there is a requirement to take something called cooperation. I want you to know something, that in everything there is a condition that must be met before there can be a release. If you do not meet that condition, the release will not be granted. That's how God operates. You do this, he'll do that. Amen? Amen. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh... But according to the what? Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, according to the world, they set their minds on the things of the world or of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. In other words, their minds are set on eternity. Their minds are always set in the area where God is priority no matter what. No matter what's going on. God is priority. God is priority. It's a divine order of priority that is set by an individual that is truly walking correctly. If God is not the priority in everything that you do, then you're out of order and out of divine order. And you cannot meet the conditions that God is requiring for me and you. Is everybody okay? All right. Hallelujah. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is empty against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh are in... Let me give you another place. Called the outer court. Those who are in the outer court cannot please God. There's three chambers of the tabernacle. There is the outer court as a place of salvation. So there are so many people that are enslaved in the outer court. They can't get out of there. They've been a believer, so called, for 30 years, know the truth, and still can't get out of the outer court because they've never made true connection in worship. They've never made that true connection and then maintained that connection. They've never worshipped him with all of their heart and all of their might. They've stayed carnally. They worship out of their mind, not out of their spirit. There's a difference. They've truly never made connection, and they call themselves believers. They really believe that they believe, but they're not. Let me share something with you vitally important, because they've never made contact with the true plane of reality of God. And you can't make contact there until you finally worship until it's no longer you. Amen. When you know that when you worship, there is a love affair. There's an intimacy. And there's a connection. And you don't stop until you're connected. And in that connection, now you've reached another plane of reality where he is so real to you that nothing else matters. Nothing. And that you know there's another area in that, that there's nothing impossible. Amen. Nothing. 
That you're no longer struggling for yourself. You're no longer fighting for yourself. You're no longer blaming people for your stupidity. Amen. Hello? For our foolish mistakes. We're no longer living in the past. We're living in another realm. Amen. A realm of pure love. And where there's pure love, there's pure justice. Amen. There's pure righteousness. It's not a fantasy. It's not a wannabe. It is. There's a difference. And I'm telling you, God is shaking, quaking, exposing, and judging his people. He is requiring us to make and meet these conditions. And there's only one way to meet his conditions. It's called unconditional surrender. Everyone say unconditional surrender. Oh, yes. Righteous requirement is to meet the conditions of God that he has laid before each and every one of us. It's in his word. It's in his voice. And it's in his counsel. Those are all the areas that we must, that's where we get it from. We must meet his conditions in his word in his voice, and in his counsel. And let me share with you, if you're not willing to meet those conditions, he says, move on. Move on. And we'll catch up later after you've eaten enough dirt. After you've come to a place of true humility and humbleness. Then we'll talk. Mark 8. Y'all came for truth, right? You know, the word where he says you should have been, I'd have you better cold or hot than what? Lukewarm. People that are enslaved in the outer court are lukewarm. They haven't met the condition to get released from the outer court. And some are still living in an outer darkness and call themselves Christians and they don't even get it. Mark 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unconditional surrender. Verse 34. Oh, happy days. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together. When Jesus had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires, say desire. desire. Whoever desires. See, that's the first condition you must meet. You must have a desire to want to know him and follow him. If you don't have that desire, then you're out of order. If that desire isn't there, you're lost. Well, I don't, I know him. No, you don't. Because that desire is constant. And that desire you just can't shake. That desire says in everything you do and every decision you make and everywhere you step and everything that you do, I want to know you. I want to know you're in this. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. If that's not there, you're out of order and disconnected. Is everybody okay? Amen. Whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow that's the formula, isn't it? Amen. First condition is the desire to know him and follow him. The one that heals you, the one that frees us, the one that prospers us, that one that grants us eternal life. <laughs> I mean, come on. If there's no desire, then we're disconnected and we are adrift from his will, his plan, and destined to eternal damnation. That's the end result. But I believe... Believe means to what? Follow. Following is a condition that must be met. Let's go a little further. Verse 35. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. See, the reason why people are enslaved in the outer court is because they're still trying to save their life. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Why? Because he's fighting for his life. And loses his own soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his 
so. Again, the first condition is a desire to know him. Amen. Second condition is to deny your way of understanding. Deny your way of understanding and recognize the way of life. Some people don't want to budge until they get understanding. That's not a relationship. The relationship is called trust. Amen. To deny your way is to deny yourself of understanding and recognize the way of life, the true way of life. The third condition is to learn warfare in the spirit. And, and, and in this condition of learning warfare in the spirit, you're not fighting for your life, you're fighting for his. Grab hold of this. You're no longer fighting for your life. You're fighting for his life in you. So you're fighting everything else to keep a place for his life in you. That's warfare. So we're pulling down principalities and powers of darkness and so forth. Why? We're fighting for the life of Christ, not for our life. And when the life of Christ shows up, souls get saved. Oh, glory. Unconditional surrender. To meet these three conditions, <laughs> present and future conditions, it takes unconditional surrender. Amen? Amen? What is unconditional surrender? It's an automatic surrender of yourself. Automatically. Boom. Amen. There's no hesitation. No. It's automatic surrender of yourself to the divine nature of Christ. It's automatic exchange. And it's rejecting human nature's influence. Is everybody okay? It's automatic surrender of yourself to the divine nature of Christ and rejecting the human nature influence. What's the human nature influence? Protect me. Fight for me. Me, 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 me. As an offspring of eternity, there's an eternal call, purpose, and destiny must be must meet conditions, amen, in our life priorities. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is, is the enemy deceives people to begin to manipulate priorities. Yeah. And they don't even realize they're in the outer court, disconnected. And that desire is lost. The only fulfillment they get is a paycheck because it's now money that promotes. It's now money that fulfills. It's now materialism that fulfills. It's now relationships that fulfill. Does everybody understand? Amen. It's what a person's possessions are that fulfill. Those individuals are disconnected. James 4. Unconditional surrender is a wholehearted, unlimited. There's no restrictions. There's no questioning. James 4. I'm going to go over that again. Hallelujah. What's unconditional surrender? Again, it's an automatic surrender of yourself. To the divine nature of Christ or re rejecting the human nature's influence. It's a place where you are wholeheartedly surrendered. It's a place of unlimited surrender and trust. It's an unrestricted place. It's an unquestioning place. It's a total, complete surrender to his will and purpose. 
It is no longer anything that has to do with you personally. It has to do with him personally. James 4, verse 1. Let's speak. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Desires. For pleasure that were in your members, you lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask correctly. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures or your carnal attitudes. Adulterers and adulteresses, that's because these are called idols. The Lord calls them adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is hatred with God? Enmity. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? The proud. The proud rejects surrender to God. And God rejects the proud. God gives grace. Now, grace is the plan of escape, right? So he gives grace to the humble. In other words, that's the plan of escape. Sometimes to escape the bondage of outer court Amen. or outer darkness. Humility is the cure for pride. And the entrance to the process of unconditional surrender. Humility. What does he say? Humble yourself. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. That's unconditional surrender. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Wonder, people wonder why. Well, I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing, and what I'm doing, but they're truly not submitted. They're not meeting the condition, because they're truly not unconditionally surrendered. Amen. They're still fighting within themselves. Amen. He says, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? He will lift you up. It's a place, a position, where it doesn't matter what the world says, only what God says. It doesn't matter what your feelings say. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what your boss says. It matters what God says. Amen. And that condition that you are reaching the process of unconditional surrender. Listen, the enemy will try to influence in you every way you can. Every way. People have a tendency to run the medication before they go to the throne. They run to the phone before they go to the throne because they're disconnected. Daniel chapter 10. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Daniel 10, please. Unconditional surrender. In verse 10. Daniel said, And suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees. In the palms of my hands. And he said to me, Oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. Everyone say, man greatly beloved. Amen. See, this is how God sees you. The problem is, is people don't see themselves that way because they keep listening to the voice of the stranger and get moved out of the courts. Now they're living in outer court. In fact, some of them are living in outer limits. Oh, Daniel, may, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. 
for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I was stood trembling. He had the fear of the Lord, didn't he? So many people do not even recognize the fear of the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand. And did what? And to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. Takes two things. You set your heart towards him to understand what he's saying and humble yourself. That's a condition that must be met. Amen? Amen. Then what happened? His prayers were heard. Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. But now I have come to make you understand what will hap happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. God's unconditional love towards us doesn't change, but his trust in us will. It is determined by our consistency of unconditional surrender. It is determined by our consistency of unconditional surrender. I'm going to say that again. Trust is earned by God towards you according to your consistency of unconditional surrender and obedience. I'll say it one more time. How do you earn God's trust? By your consistency of unconditional surrender and obedience. Set heart towards understand and desire his ways. It's a positioned place where you position yourself to an unconditional surrender and obedience. It's called humility. Humble yourself. It pushes you in that position. Hallelujah. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Heaven moved on Daniel's behalf, didn't it? Hmm. Daniel prayed constantly for forgiveness and repentance for his own sins and the sins of his nation. Weeping is not repentance. Sorrow is not repentance. Repentance is turning away from all forms of sin, evil influence, and doing the work of righteousness and holiness. You can cry all day long. There was somebody else that tried that. His name was Esau. And repentance was not granted to him. Repentance is turning away from all forms of sin, evil influence, and doing the work of righteousness and holiness. It is, again, what we are trying to get us to that place of reaching the plane of God's reality. His reality, not ours. Because mankind lives in a false reality, a fantasy world. This is nothing but a fantasy. It's false. But there's a true reality that can only come by being connected to the presence of God. And that's where true identity comes from. Amen? See, they really don't realize it. They're, the only thing that they're looking at, because they live in a false reality and they're in, in a false position, they're looking at sinning against man, not recognizing that they've sinned against God. Oh man, I sinned against my wife, my friend, my this, my boss. No, you sinned against God first. There must be a maintaining of humbleness and repentance to follow. God must always be at the top of your priority. Whatever you do and wherever you go. If he's not, you're disconnected. Luke 14. Many people will say, but what about my life? You don't have one. 
lose it. People who fight for their life are in the butt ministry. <laughs> but, 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 but. And they are certainly not the head, they are the tail. <laughs> Hallelujah. You didn't think you'd get away with that one, did you? <laughs> That's where people call them buttheads. <laughs> Luke 14, verse 25. Now great multitudes went out with Jesus and he turned and he said to him. So they were following him and he stopped and he turns and he says, hold on a second, I got to tell you something. If any of you, anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, does not hate his wife and children, does not hate his brothers and sisters. Yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And this is where we must examine ourselves. Does everybody grab hold of this? Everybody should, I hope you know what this means. It doesn't mean that you hate them. It means you hate them. <laughs> Compared to God. Does somebody get it? Because he's priority. Anything that is out of order is the devil. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Again, they're people pleasers, not God pleasers. Amen. Oh, glory. I want to say that again. Verse 26, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. So if you're not willing to meet the condition, you might as well leave now. <laughs> Hello? You might as well go out and eat some more dirt. Go out and make an idiot of yourself again. Hello? And whoever does not bear his cross, which means fight, and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost? Whether he is, has enough to finish. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him and say, and this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to defeat the other one that's got 20,000. He better get out there and make some conditions and negotiate or worship like he's never worshipped before and let the divine nature and divine intervention come. Or else whether, while the other is still a, a greater way off, he sends a delegation and he has conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has. Um, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. That's a condition to meet. Amen? We're to be the salt. If salt is good, but if it, the salt has lost its what? Flavor. <laughs> if it's lost, it's conditioned. If it's lost, it's connection. It no longer can be seasoned. It's neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill. But men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. That is so powerful. This needs to get in people's spirit. Because if that is in your spirit, then God is always priority. Amen? This is unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender. 1 Corinthians 1.
Hallelujah. You know, you got to think about something. There's conditions everywhere. Amen. There's conditions at your work. Some people want to get promoted and never m met the conditions. We have con conditions in our ministry, in the discipleship house. We have conditions in living on the campus. If you're not willing to fulfill those conditions, get out. Go somewhere else. First Corinthians 1, 18. There's conditions everywhere. There's conditions going through the airport and security. Hello? If you're not willing to meet those conditions, no doors open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 18, let's speak it. For the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Now grab hold of this, because the message to the cross is unconditional surrender. Because if Jesus was an unconditionally surrendered, there wouldn't be a message from the cross. Amen. So the message to the cross was unconditional surrender. Message from the cross is the gospel of Christ Jesus. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe or those who follow. For Jews requested a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks, Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the natural realm or the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He called us boneheads and turned us into trophies for his glory. If you're willing to cooperate with unconditional surrender. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the world, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are not, which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, are, that no flesh shall glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Again, the message to the cross is unconditional surrender. And f or there would be no message from the cross, would there? We have been called to fulfill a mission of utmost importance according to the counsel of the Lord. And without unconditional surrender, there can be no sanctification. There can be no righteousness. And there can be no redemption. Remember, sanctification and cooperation brings the anointing. Without sanctification and cooperation, there's no anointing. There's no power. You'll do it in your own strength. And you can't do it in your own strength. And you certainly can't do unconditional surrender in your own strength. You need to have the anointing. Amen. Amen? So sanctification... And cooperation brings the anointing. Why? Because sanctification is a place where things are being cleaned out. It's clean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Yes. Go to James chapter 1. 
Unconditional surrender is required. Now, so many people forget that not only God is love, but God is just. People are always living, oh, God, love, 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 love. Oh, yeah? Become a sinner and see what happens when you get before him. <laughs> Do the things that are displeasing to him and see what happens in your life. James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. <laughs> count it all joy after you repented from foolish decisions. That's what it means. <laughs> Knowing that the testing of your connection or your faith produces endurance. Hello. How many of y'all know God will test your connection? How many know that the devil will challenge you in your connection? God wants to know what you're going to do. He wants to know if you're going to allow the devil to get things out of priority. And then he'll just step back and you'll have to re-earn his trust again. It says here, but let patience or endurance have its what? Perfect work. Perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Count it all joy after you repented from foolish decisions and meet the conditions of unconditional surrender. Get reconnected and let your trial of endurance have its perfect work. Until you enter perfect surrender, become complete in him, and you will lack nothing from above. You'll become a doer And not just a hearer. Amen? You'll become a what? A doer, not a hearer. Go to verse 21. Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive them with meekness the implanted word, which is able to what? Save your soul. But be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. Oh, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, in other words, in a place of unconditional surrender, and it's not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Matthew 10. Unconditional surrender. Matthew 10. Glory. Verse I believe God is tightening up some things. Amen. Verse 32, let's speak. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Hello, snap. Do not think I came to bring what? Peace. peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace. I came to bring a what? A sword. A sword is used to cut yourself loose. For I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Hallelujah. 
We are to use the, war, the sword. I'm going to say the sword of sowing the word. The sword of sowing the word. To cut loose the old and receive the new with new power and new freedom. Again, it is so vitally important of worship and connect. Worship and connect. You sow, sow, sow. You know, you, you, you got to sow your way out of everything. That's what repentance is in thinking about repenting. It's confession and then turning from it. Amen? So you can sit there and think repentance all day long. It ain't nothing going to happen. You must sow in the spirit to reap life. No sow in the spirit, no life. And again, there are conditions that you and I must meet. There is a place with borders, walls, gates, and a condition of qualification to enter. That's called heaven. And there's a place with no walls, open borders, and no conditions called hell. Promoted by the Democratic Party. <laughs> That's why it's called the Democratic Party. They don't realize that they're one breath away from hell. Psalm 81, and we'll close here. Oh, hallelujah. See, they're trying to bring hell on earth. We're trying to bring heaven on earth. I can't believe how many believers still promote. It just baffles me because they're disconnected. They'll argue with you and whatever, and it's like, They call Trump wicked, and they don't even get it. Psalm 81, is everybody there? Hallelujah. And verse 8, please. Psalm 81, verse 8. Hear, all my people, and I will admonish you. Oh, Israel. Now, when God speaks of Israel, it speaks of the body of Christ also. If you will listen to me, there shall be no foreign God among you. Nor shall you worship any foreign God. That's material, anything. Your job, your money, your spouse, your children, anything. It can become an idol. Your talents, your abilities, all of those things. They can become foreign God and an idol. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt or out of the land of bondage. Open your mouth wide and I will what? That means so in the spirit. Does everybody get that? Open your mouth wide and sing till you drop. Connect. But my people would not heed my voice. They wouldn't do it. They just stood around a room and watched everybody else sing and connect. They had a false humility and false holiness. Close their eyes, lift their hands, and don't do nothing. They're statues of nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart and to walk in their own carnal counsels. Oh, that my people would have listened to me and obeyed me and put themselves in an unconditional surrender and they would walk in my ways. Amen. I would soon subdue their enemies. Hello. Amen. I would turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to me, but their fate would endure forever. The Lord would have fed us also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock, and I would have satisfied you, he says. This unconditional surrender brings sanctification, the anointing, fresh rhema, fresh revelation. Amen?
These individuals would not worship, but worship themselves and unseen influences. So the Lord turned them over to their stubborn hearts and their own emotional counsel because they hate correction and they'll miss revelation food of prosperity and growth. I'm going to say it again. They'll miss revelation food of prosperity and growth. Unconditional surrender in every area will meet the conditions of not only release, but of God's presence, kingdom, and favor, and his trust. The more we are consistent in unconditional surrender, the more trust you'll get from him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We pray for each and every one of us here today, Lord, that you would impart this seed, protect it, allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory, and bring it to remembrance as we make our decisions as we make our purchases, recognizing and correcting us, Lord, if we are not putting things in priority and meeting the conditions today that you've placed us. Because those are vows that we, you and I have met, that we have kept, that we have said, Lord, I will, I will, I will. Now, will we? In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen.